Now, I love horror movies, so when I found out there was a horror board game where I could live out my own horror movies, I might keep a track of how many times I actually say horror in this video. We are, of course, talking about Final Girl, published by Van Ryder Games, which is a solo, it's a single player game in which you move around different scenarios for those different horror movie tropes and settings that you love of some of your favorite movies. But this time, you're the main character, you are the final girl trying to make it to the end. Now, these aren't easy games. I did say single player. Now, I've not really touched on single player games before. I have played Lost Expedition, which I think is the only single player experience I've ever had. Other than obviously some of the videos I do for this channel with like miniature games and stuff, but they're not, they're not solo games. This is the first tailored experience other than Lost Expeditions that I played in. And I was very surprised. The reason I play board games is to play with friends, is to enjoy these interesting games and see how other people interact with them so to start with i wasn't i didn't think i would like this honestly the theme had me hooked entirely the way the game was designed and its art and all of that interested me so i i took the plunge and i'm really glad i did final girl is a it is it's a it's a masterpiece that's why i'm making this video i in general do rule videos but if the video is ever just entirely a review then it means i love the game now i'm either going to be head over heels in love with it or hate it if i've made the review i just i don't have the passion to make something in between i don't make reviews on every game i've only ever made one like full review like this and that was on nemesis which is my favorite board game of all time so this is definitely up there it's going to make the top 10 later this year when i do that I can't believe how much I like it. Like I say, single player games haven't really, have not really touched me so far. And this one definitely has. Now, the way it works is you buy a core box and then you have feature films or feature boxes, which you mix in these different movies. So there's stuff for like, now I will say they, they live in settings that you remember. So I'm going to name some films. They're not necessarily based on those films or adjacent to those films. They're just very similar vibes I get. I'm sure you get them too. So there's Friday the 13th, Elm Street. There's The Thing. Just some of my favorites. Uh, I've got one which is very similar to something like The Strangers or When a Stranger Calls. So it's so it's Strangers Outside Your House, which I think is a very scary concept. Get a little onto the theme in a moment though. Let's talk about the expansions. I should say... As many variations as there is, and there are, I think there's like Series 3 coming out. So there's a ton of different options. So if you're looking for a solo game that you can keep rinsing and reusing and having these new experiences, this is definitely that game. However, I'm saying how great it is. I wouldn't be doing my, not really a job. I wouldn't, I feel like I should say the expansions are very hard to get a hold of. So the ones I wanted, like I've just listed, of those I've only managed to get one. And they're not stocked very often, so it can be very difficult to get hold of. So if you listen to this video and you think, I want to rush out and get it, do be aware of that. It might take you a while to find the title you want. But when you find it, it will definitely be worth it. So let's move on to the theme now. As I said, I got a knock at the door, which is the... It's sort of the stranger... The, you know the sort of idea, the babysitter at home alone... That kind of theme, there's strangers outside trying to get into your house. And like I say, those those movies immediately jumped to me. I remember watching When a Stranger Calls as a kid, The Strangers more recently. I absolutely love those movies because it's some of the best horror, like actual skin crawling horror. Whereas something like The Thing has... I can't relate to The Thing. The Thing is my favorite movie, but I, I've i never been in that situation. I'm never going to be in that situation. I can relate to some of the feelings and I can see them portray it on screen and feel that. But stuff like The Strangers, Scream, when I was a child and watched Scream, just because it was so real, this could happen. Some maniac could be running around in a costume just slashing people up. The Strangers, you could have a night where there's some creepy folk hanging outside your house causing trouble. And that's terrifying. Like I say, that is where true horror is. So I wanted to start this game with one of the scarier ones for me because I wanted to feel some horror as I played it. Now, this game isn't necessarily scary. At no point are you going to be scared playing it, but it does encapsulate that theme very well. Which, considering it is just meeples around a board, you're moving and playing cards, it's very difficult to put into words how it encapsulates the theme, but it does. 
as you play it, you will realize that it's small things like how the killers move in a horror movie. So you're basically flipping over cards to reveal their movements for turn. So they could just appear in front of you and suddenly they're chasing you or other civilians around you. And it feels like that horror movie or even little things like there's two people in each bedroom and you're at like a camp and I wonder what they're doing. No, seriously, what are they doing? I only went to one camp and I sprained my ankle the first day we were there. I don't really want to get into it, but it was a horrid tackle. Definite red. He should have been off. Instead, it was me off in crutches for the rest of the week. Where was I? It's all well and good feeling like a horror movie, but how does it play? There's people out there that aren't really fussed with the theme. For me, it's very important. I know people prefer how it actually plays. Is it interesting? Is it, going to, is it going to keep you involved, interested through the game? And it is. It feels very much like a puzzle. You're working against this AI to try and defeat the villains before they manage to take out all your friends. And then finally you. It's all about hand management. You're going to have cards that you can play that allow you to do stuff. So you are, as you play them down, they're not available next turn. So you're trying to think ahead. Do I need to run next turn? Do I need to fight back? Am I trying to search for something? You can create these combinations with weapons. There are so many micro decisions to be made at every turn. It's hard not to love this game. Now, as well as playing the cards that are also dice, you have to roll on those cards. So in order to do the things you want to do, you then need to roll dice, which does add a massive element of luck. Now you can modify these as ways to roll more dice, as ways to increase your dice rolls, or just fix the dice in your favor. But it is worth noting at times, if you get the wrong dice, you get the wrong cards drawn from the event and terror decks. It can feel very much like everything's against you. And I don't think that's a very fun experience, but I think it's something worth noting. It might be something that puts you off. It might be something where you feel like if there's a chance that happens and I'm spending all this time, because I will say the setup, the takedown, the table space you will need for this is big. It takes a while to get everything out and set up and ready to go. And it doesn't take up a small amount of space. So it's not one you're going to travel with. It's not one you're just going to throw out here and there if you don't have the space. So for me so far, it's been one that I just bring out at home. If I've got a spare hour here and there, I will go play it. But you do need space. You do need time. And if you're using your space, you're using your time in this. Sometimes it can feel very unfair. So I do think it's worth making a note. Randomness can be fun for some people, but not for others. And one of those points for me is the health system. Now, I really like it thematically. So on your last health, there's a chance you come back to life. Similar for the killer, which would happen in a horror movie. That is a very well-known trope. However, let's say you've got a really close game. You've finally got the killer down and you've done it. Then he comes back to life, takes you down and you flip over yours and you don't get that second life. I don't know, it's random, so it just, again, it's one of those things that can feel like a kick to the nuts rather than a stab to the back. But where this game really gels together is how the theme and narrative melds well with the gameplay. Every action you have has an impact. If you decide to search or you decide to run away from the killers and hide and just try and craft your own stuff and build up and then take them on later on, it does mean they're gonna absolutely wipe out everything wipe out everyone you know and vice versa if you decide to save everyone and help them escape you do get powers you get some abilities you get some bonuses but it does mean when it comes to that final game you're not going to have the items you're not going to have the stuff you need to take the killers on so it's a very delicate balancing act and i would say that's where this game really shines every decision is so important and it's how you roll with these punches of the randomness of the decks that really makes this game fun. It makes it exciting and it makes it feel like a horror game or horror movie. The day I got out, I learned the rules fairly quickly. There was a few that I had to sort of look up and see what other people had said on them, but I don't think it's too difficult to understand. I will be doing a how-to video, so hopefully I link it up here. If not, check back in a few days. It won't be long. I've got a how-to and a gameplay video come in, so hopefully they help you on how to play this game if you are stuck. But like I said, I think it's I think it's fairly simple. It is very complex, but I don't think it's hard to learn. Off on another tangent, as I was saying, the first day I got it, I played it twice. The day after I played it twice, I've taken a little break now just so I can sort of digest and see how I feel about it. And then I'm gonna go back in, 
play it for the review or play it for the how-to, I should say. And then I'm just going to be playing it all the time. I, I want to get more stories. I, I'm not yet sick of the one I've been playing. It is very difficult, I will say. So if you're looking for a game that's not very challenging, you don't have to make a lot of decisions. It's very easy and you can just lay back. This is a horror movie. This is not that game for you. You need to be on, you need to be switched on for this. You need to be ready. You need to be thinking else that killer is going to catch up with you. Got a creepy final line. <laughs> But that is my review of Final Girl. It is, it's an interesting one. I never thought I would love solo games. I absolutely adore this. The expansions are difficult to get hold of, so bear that in mind. It feels very much like a horror movie. So if you're just interested in horror and looking for a board game or something to keep you occupied, and you're not really even into board games, this is perfect. It's almost like a mini escape room where you're trying to get away from this villain before they can get to you. I think this game is for horror fans, it's for board game fans. It really does hit all the nails on the head. That's all I've got for this episode though. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you subscribed. Check out our other miniature stuff and tabletop content, reviews, gameplay, all of the good stuff. If you've got any suggestions on what you want to see next or comments on Final Girl, drop them in the comments below. But that is all I've got for this episode, so I will catch you in the next one.